and it looks like we're live. Hi everyone, it's Gina and I'm back with day 16. Can you imagine? It's hard to believe that this is, this has been 16 days of live streaming of Create with Gina. I'm going to give give you a couple of seconds to, to pop in. Today's going to be a little bit of a challenging topic and um, when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about today and the activity that I wanted to do with everyone, or you know, you're kind of gonna you're gonna be doing it behind the scenes, majority of it, but I'm going to kind of lead you through and it's uh it's a tough topic considering the times that we're in right now. So um we're going to be creating what I I'm I'm calling a clutter collage. But I'm going to walk you through several different things before I explain what that's going to be all about. I know that we're in a time where we're all together. Most of us are, are together unless you have um, what they're considering an essential job and you're not at home with your, with your kids. Um, so in this case, we're, it's going to be something that you can do with your kids um, whenever you get home or it's something that you want to do on your own but um, I can the process is going to be a little bit of a challenge uh, like I said considering the, the time period that we're in I did make some notes and like I said when I was thinking about what I wanted to, to um, talk about this kept popping into my head was the um, clutter and trauma and all of that stuff kind of um, what people would normally go through anyway but it seems like we're going through it on a more global scale right now so I did make some notes because I you know like I said I'm actually a topic that I'm really nervous about talking about but you know sometimes you just have to jump in and talk about the tough topics just trying to straighten this phone here make sure it doesn't fall over so Clutter. Are there things that are cluttering up your life? And uh, it could be anything. A clutter can range from your inbox being filled, and I have my own personal story relating to that. And clutter could um, could be that junk drawer that you have in the kitchen that's just filled with you know stuff that you know you need to go through. It's that one drawer that you go to and uh, that li that receipt you want to keep gets thrown in there or um, an old key gets thrown in there in there maybe something your kids have made and you really don't want to throw it out gets thrown in there so that you know your kitchen can be one source of clutter your closet that could be another source of clutter maybe you have clothing that you haven't worn in the last six months in the last year or maybe the last five years and I again have my own personal story surrounding that that I'll, I'll share with you so clutter can come in so many different forms from the from the the kitchen having you know three ladles do we really need three ladles maybe you have two can openers and uh, could be um, in your in your closet where you have that section over in the corner where you have a bunch of jeans that no longer fit you and haven't really fit you for three years but you're still really hoping that one day you will lose all of the extra weight that you're planning on losing so you can fit into them so there's a lot of um and i'm going to talk a little bit about the reasoning behind why there's clutter as well um and then talk about the little activity that we're going to do in addition to the the little bit of art that we'll also create because this is supposed to be kind of an art therapy kind of um, activity right so different areas that you might want to examine as far as clutter is concerned paper I know a lot of us we get the mail a lot of extra um, stuff comes in the mail and we may have a spot where it just gets put and it just piles and piles and piles or maybe you subscribe to different magazines and uh, all of these magazines just keep piling and piling up. I see that a couple of people are popping on, so just go ahead and say hi, and um, just simply leave a, a comment in the comment section below, and just you know tell me that you're here. So 
maybe you have a subscription to different magazines like I was saying and uh, the magazines just keep piling and piling and piling because in one magazine there might be a favorite a recipe that you really love in another recipe it might be um, a dream vacation idea that you'd want to take and in another particular magazine there might be something else that you want you're keeping the magazine for so why not take out the pages that you want to keep and just get rid of the rest of the magazine so there are simple ways of kind of working around the clutter and I'm going to throw out a few others for your clothing um, I had me let me tell you a personal story first I had a lot of clothing and that would be about five years ago and I decided one spring that I was going to go through my clothing and since then I've done it I think about three times I went through the first time and I got rid of two-thirds of my closet and I got down to the bare necessities my absolute favorite couple pairs of jeans slacks shirts dresses and I had my nugget wardrobe and about two years ago I did it again so now my wardrobe are items that I absolutely absolutely love and I do occasionally buy different things and add into it but I don't I'm not you know standing in front of a closet completely overwhelmed by all the clothing I have and still deciding that oh, I have nothing to wear you know that kind of a feeling or you pull an outfit out and it just doesn't work and you pull something else out and pretty soon the entire closet is pulled out but yet you still have nothing to wear right hi Gabrielle good to see you so my yes my closet has I've decluttered my closet at least three times in the last five years um, the other thing the wallet you ever put or maybe your purse maybe you carry on a, a big purse and everything gets thrown in there you've got your chapstick the, the uh, wallet that has um, a bunch of receipts that are falling out of it maybe you have um, a semi junk bottle of water and uh, if you ever accidentally drop your purse it's going to just like flood with stuff falling out of it right that might be um, an area of, of clutter for you toys if you have young kids and uh, they've outgrown certain toys but yet those toys are still sitting in the corner and nobody's really playing with them and you're saying well you know there is a I know there are a couple of kids that are in another home somewhere maybe I should donate them to Goodwill and you said that like six months ago this may be the perfect time to actually grab a box and start packing those things in right um, what about I mentioned a paper wallet your inbox I mentioned that earlier I and I was going to tell you a personal story I actually went through uh, the last six months I finally finished I believe on December the 18th decluttering my inbox my inbox had emails in there from 2011 and I think I got rid of over 40,000 you heard me correctly 40,000 emails in six months it took me that long and I'm telling you it was that was a stressful period but I got rid of them and I think now um, I try not to have any more than maybe a hundred in my inbox and I try, I've been trying to go through them every single you know first thing in the morning go through and see what I need to to, to work on first and uh, maybe things I need to delete and just put things into folders that's an easy way to declutter the inbox is to just um, create folders and start I know they do collect so fast it's crazy and I'm the type I don't always get to them so they build up and they build up on the reason why I had some stuff from 2011 is because I got an I had subscribed to a particular website and uh, I absolutely loved the content I was getting so I was saving everything from this one person and then another subscription and then another subscription and it just it just got really really crazy so I made the effort took the time and sat down and decluttered so 
what can we do about all of this and what does this have to do with this particular activity that we're going to do I'm going to share that with you but first let's talk a little bit about why we hold on to stuff because this is going to help I think everyone in this whole process of being quarantined and you know feel like you, we have so much stuff to do and so little time well actually now we have a lot of time to get it done so but why do we hold on to this stuff in the first place right number one the biggest reason I think is sentimental reasons and speaking from personal experience I had a lot of stuff I moved uh, twice in the last year and prior to my first move last summer I and I knew I had to put some stuff into storage so I had to go through every room in my house and really decide what did I really need and trust me I could come up with a story for everything that I own there is a reason why I own it and there's some story behind it but I had to physically mentally go through everything that I own and decide is that for keeps and why am I keeping it and sentimental reasons were that was the main thing so when there's a memory that's attached to, to certain items it is it does make it even harder to get rid of certain things but one of the things I learned to do was grab my camera take a picture if it's that important and send it on to its next home by putting it into a donation box the next reason why I think a lot of people hold on to things is because they're going through a period of depression and uh, when you're depressed you want to have things around you that bring you comfort right and you don't want to that's the that's the last that's the worst time to be decluttering is when you're having a, a period of depression um, and I'm going to talk about what you could actually do to make it a little bit easier on yourself if you are experiencing depression and you do want to declutter your home at the same time another reason why I think people hold on to things is past trauma um, so certain things even they've gone through a particular event and they have a certain thing not necessarily affiliated with that particular event but they it has brought them some kind of comfort maybe when they were going through the that certain event a particular thing brought them comfort so it's kind of hard to release it due to the connection that um, that it that it has with the fact that it brought them comfort maybe you're holding on to stuff simply because you just have bad habits um, maybe things just get piled up because you walk in and there's a table that's your kind of catch-all and you throw your keys there and the mail goes there and everything else and after a while things just kind of get cluttered and you know you just find it hard to get rid of stuff you just find it hard to be to be organized and which brings me to the next point just a, a lack of organization right and the thing is when you're organized it is so much easier to actually um, be able to do the things that you want to do because you're not spending so much time taking care of the stuff right uh, because there's really no system so once you have a system in place it's a lot easier to um, to create the kind of home that you want one of the biggest reasons why I think people hold on to stuff is past trauma and I mentioned that before now the question is what is trauma and I made some notes based on you know definitions that I found so what's trauma and according to the definition that I found trauma is defined as a deeply distressing or disturbing experience emotional shock following a stressful event or a physical injury and it can sometimes lead to long-term neurosis does that sound like anything that we're experiencing right now and I wasn't even going to mention the whole coronavirus event but that is a huge one that is impacting the globe right now and I'm sure that we can all come up with our own personal traumas that we've experienced but right now the coronavirus is a huge 
um, a globally impacting event and you know that's creating all kinds of traumas for us and I think at the end of all of this I think psychologists and psychiatrists they're really going to have a field day because you know if we don't deal with the kind of issues that come up right now as far as uh, what's created with us we basically lost freedom right we are not free to go out we all feel vulnerable we all feel like we're going to you know we, we leave the house and we're going to get sick so we've kind of lost our freedom um some people have lost have suffered loss through death maybe um and without the coronavirus being around me we've all suffered a uh, loss through death at some point in our life right we might have suffered loss through illness and i know for me one of the um one of the things that was a huge loss for me was when i got diagnosed with lupus um, nine years ago ten years ago that was a huge loss because i did end up losing my job um, I basically lost my mobility for a while because I if at some point was using a cane at some point I was using a walker and I wasn't necessarily free to go wherever I wanted to because the Sun was an issue and I couldn't necessarily be in the Sun for long periods of time so there was a lot of loss and I'm sure that if you're here in the lupus community you can relate to that right and I'm sure that you can you understand that the whole the losses that come when you've been diagnosed with a chronic illness so there are a lot of different traumas that we're all experiencing and now on top of it we have the whole coronavirus and so i'm i'm saying all of that to bring we all, bring us all back to this now that we're all at home and uh, we have a chance to really look closely at where we live and uh, maybe you were thinking about you know there's some changes that need to be made maybe you're looking around and you see that, that there is some kind of clutter in in the home so what what areas do you need to tackle first maybe at this point it's not really the inbox that's really not important at this point um, maybe you find that there's a box of stuff just kind of thrown into the corner and um, maybe it's a bunch of toys and if you have your kids you can have them go through, help you to go through the whole process of, of decluttering. And one is the, this might be a fun activity to have the kids do. Once you're once they've decided what they're going to get rid of, have have them for a moment just kind of create a fun sculpture use with the toys that they're going to donate. Don't break anything apart, but just maybe put them into the middle of the room and have them just have one last little bit of fun and create a little bit of a, a sculpture using the toys that they're about to donate and when they've had their fun then place them into a box write donation on them and once all of this chaos is over then you can find yourself a goodwill or a salvation army or maybe a couple of families down the road who might need them right and i'm going to bring us to the this next activity once when you're going through all of the paperwork that you have stacked away or all of the magazines you start cutting out different images that you really like let's just say that you want to go on this fabulous vacation after all of this craziness is over right go through your magazine or the magazines that you have find images of what you want your vacation to look like and what do you want it to feel like and start creating a collage of those particular images and that's what I, that's the activity i want you to create a collage from the particular magazine clutter that you might have of your perfect vacation or maybe you're planning on moving so go through and look up if uh, different images of maybe what your dream house what you want your dream house to look like and start putting together a collage using those images and once you've collected all of your images take the magazines and get rid of them don't donate them anywhere find a recycling bin and throw those magazines inside of them and use your images to create the um, your beautiful collage or whatever dream that you might have um, make a beautiful piece of artwork out of it for the clothing I would simply just go through find a box and 
place them in there and donate. Don't bother to try them on and say, well, maybe this fits, maybe I just squeeze into them one more time. We'll just, just take the clothing and uh, say one final farewell, put it into the box. All right. So um, if, you, if you have any questions on uh, different ways that you can declutter, feel free to just pop them into the, um, the comments section below and I will certainly try to answer those as clearly and as quickly as I possibly can. But for now, what we're trying to do is just create a simple piece of art and most likely it's going to be from your from your paper clutter just create a nice um, what we what we're calling a clutter collage and um, make it positive make it something that you can look forward to after all of this um, you know social distancing and uh, um, being quarantined after all of this this is over I know this is a little much and um, I hope that you kind of got the gist of what I'm trying to relate like I said this this is not what I had originally planned but literally about 15 minutes before I came live this the thought just kept popping into my head you need to talk about declutter you need to talk about declutter and it was just um I just had to I had to answer that <laughs> otherwise it was just going to keep gnawing at me so let's create a, a clutter collage get your images from your magazines cut them out get out some words cut them out and create an, a small one or create a nice big one it, it the the choice is entirely up to you and this is going to be a nice little way of kind of working through some of the the feelings that and the emotions that we might be experiencing during this challenging time and this is not something that you have to finish today because when you're decluttering your home it's gosh i think i took about a week to, to do it because I focus on one particular room or one particular area per day. It can be very overwhelming whenever you're trying to do everything all at once. And certainly get your kids involved in this as well and make it kind of fun. Alright, so um, thank you for being here with me. And if you do have any questions about this or any of the other videos that I've shared previously, please um, pop them into the comment section below and I will answer those as quickly as I can. And what I will do is I will go through and I will do my own activity and I will also share that with you as I've done in the previous videos. Thanks again for being here with me and I hope this helps in some way with, with whatever you might be experiencing during this challenging time. I appreciate, I appreciate you taking the time out to be here today and I will see you again on the next, which will be day 17 of Create with Gina.